This is basically a survey commissioned by LinkedIn, uh, and it involved 2,000 working professionals in the UAE. They're aged between 25 and 55. And the, basically the highlight of the survey was that women feel an entitlement gap that is basically a burden or that is that has impacts on their career progression. Now, what does it mean, right? It means that women uh, feel they are less deserving than men when it comes to pay increases, when it comes to promotions, when it comes to career progression in general. So that's the main highlight. Maybe another highlight that is also very interesting about the survey, it's basically telling us that 64%, so like a high percentage of both men and women agree that actually, yes, women feel an entitlement gap in certain scenarios in the workplace. So, which is also very interesting, right? So men actually feel that too. Um, a closer look, if we want to evaluate uh, in terms of sectors that are more impacted, so where this gap is more felt uh, reportedly by these women who were surveyed, uh, it's basically media, uh, comms, uh, communications, um, and you know these industries were the industries where this entitlement gap is mostly felt. So, and it's a bit ironic, right? Because media is the industry that's supposed to be talking about this, where women should be feeling uh, uh, more deserving because, you know, they mostly talk about, you know, this and other uh, uh, subjects, of course, marketing as well was one of the uh, uh, sectors where this entitlement gap was felt uh, more. Um, so the reasons, why is that? Um, like, obviously, uh, this is not an economic regression, right? This is a survey. So it should be used to start a conversation uh, or several conversations about what's happening in the labor uh, work uh, or in the workplace, uh, labor market. Um, we see some, you know, indicators here and there pointing to some problems that deserve to be talked about, like, for instance, negotiation, right? So we know that uh, women tend to negotiate less in the, in the workplace, um, and now the survey is highlighting this. For instance, 25% uh, of women reported that they do not negotiate the salary of a position they're um, interviewing for, versus 15% only uh, of men do not negotiate it. So the reflex for men is to negotiate the pay. For women, they don't do that. Another major important uh, also uh, factor or development maybe is the flexible working arrangements, right? So with the pandemic, um, more and more professionals are asking for this because they like it, right? Because we like to work on our own pace. And the survey actually points to the fact that 80% of working professionals surveyed, they actually like and require uh, and ask for flexible work arrangement. But women, most women, feel that flexible work arrangements are taxing their professional progression. Again, the question is why? Why, why is it happening? Uh, maybe one factor behind it is uh, the, you know, the culture of always being switched on. Uh, by corporations, so you, you're always required to answer your emails. And it's known that women have more responsibilities in their households so that they kind of switch off at a certain time. And so who ends up attending to this late email? Their male counterpart. So they will at some point feel less entitled to ask for a raise because they feel they deserve it less because they're attending to their household responsibilities Etc. So maybe that's you know one uh, uh, development or sub development that is uh, inducing or that is behind this entitlement gap. Also, maybe something else we, we can think of is the idea of, of productivity in general. So how are we measuring productivity? And this will also help women. Um, so are we measuring it by being like super swift and always on, or are we changing the way we think of our KPIs? What are other ways that COVID uh, has impacted uh, women? According to global research by LinkedIn, uh, 
like more than or, or over two and five women were forced to uh, either consider leaving their jobs or actually they have left their jobs permanently or uh, you know uh, on a temporary basis because of covid right so women's jobs were more vulnerable than men's jobs during the pandemic now that is the context the new data uh, is positive data when it comes to hiring and it's uh, pertaining to the UAE, right? Uh, hiring women. Let me dig out the exact uh, percentage points here because it's, you know, good news that we should be highlighting. So basically in the UAE, according to LinkedIn, uh, LinkedIn's data, as of January this year, to, so 2021, we have noticed that women have gained grounds in the job market. So basically now new hires, uh, uh, female new hires represent around 37% of total new hires. And that's important because that's an increase of about like 1.7% from uh, year on year or compared to last year. So we know that women took a massive hit in the pandemic, but things are changing now in the UAE when it comes to hiring uh, uh, females. When it comes to industries, we have more new hires, uh, female new hires uh, in education. For instance, more than 56% of new hires are females. Uh, in media and comms as well, around 52% of new hires are females. And healthcare as well, uh, 45%. And we are seeing also uh, women being hired uh, more in industries that are usually male uh, dominated, which is also a positive development. We're talking about software and IT. We're talking about corporate services. I'm just checking the data here. Over 2.5 percent, you know, uh, year on year uh, growth uh, in those sectors. So, one more females are being recruited, um, and it's most probably because of the policies that are more inclusive, uh, right? When it comes to hiring, and also more job, job vacancies. Uh, related to more demand in those industries. Like, like how can uh, women be uh, more assertive when it comes to you know, asking for a raise or, or uh, asking for that promotion? Like what, what advice do you think we can give though? You know, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, not a career coach or anything, no. but I can That's tell not- you, yeah, I can tell you from the conversations that we have on, on, on LinkedIn, because what we do is, is we steer conversations with professionals, right, around different topics, including uh, uh, women in the workforce. So it's been happening happening for a few months, and we have been receiving a lot of very interesting insight and also tips um, when it comes to uh, being hired first. So, for, for instance, it's it's like a known fact, and also some data proves it, that women tend to um, avoid applying to certain positions if they don't fit all the requirements. Whereas the man usually applies, or takes the chance of applying, even if he does not have, you know, all the specs or all the requirements. So that's one tip, right? It's it's about being out there and uh, you know being more confident about uh, uh, applying. Uh, also, being verbal. And here we talk about having your own voice and building your own voice. Um, I, I mean, I cannot but talk about LinkedIn, right? Uh, not just because I work there, but it's very important for professionals to always have a CV that is alive. Um, that's what I always say, like, if you go to sleep, your professional self is still alive. And it's very important to cultivate this voice for both men and, and women. But for women, it's also a, a, like a very important um, element uh, of their professional uh, voice that they should cultivate. Always be involved in conversations in their industries, always be up to uh, uh, or up for talking or enriching their network. Uh, do not be shy to approach other people, be it male or uh, females, uh, in their professional uh, sphere or beyond to be inspired to ask about certain development, to understand their industries better, or simply to straightforward ask for a job or uh, for new opportunities. So cultivating a voice is very important here, right? Thank you.